it's that time of year again. Apple just released the iPhone SE 3, which to many is extremely exciting. The SE series has been some of the most reliable and reasonably priced phones on the market. They give you the iPhone experience without the iPhone price tag. I just got my hands on two brand new iPhone SE 3s. And in this video, we're going to do an unboxing, initial review, repairability review, as well as a teardown. We'll be swapping parts between both devices and seeing if Apple hit us with any anti-repair surprises with the new release. Newsflash, they usually do. So the last SE2 came with the charging cube and headphones. This box is way too thin to include those, so I'm assuming it didn't. We're gonna open this up and see what the packaging is like. And that is our SE3. It looks a lot shinier than the SE2. It also comes with these little prints, which is really cool. I haven't seen these before. Something about this phone definitely feels more premium than the SE2. I think it's just a lot shinier. We're gonna boot this phone on and I'm just gonna leave it over here. In the box, we don't have the charging cube. We have the charging cable, which is typical of Apple nowadays. And we have their little SIM ejector, instructions, disclaimers, and one Apple sticker. So this is actually the first iPhone since Apple announced that they're going to allow people to do self-service repair. I'm not sure if we'll see any surprises inside or see anything that makes it easier for you and me to fix our phones. We're gonna speed through this unboxing, activate both phones and get them to the home screen. The red one looks a lot cooler. This one feels extremely premium. We'll turn on the other phone. So aside from being shiny, these look and feel about the same as the iPhone 8 and the iPhone SE 2. So in, in that aspect, Apple hasn't really done much. So what most of you are probably thinking is, why should I care about this phone? It looks the same as the iPhone 8 and the SE2. Well, it's not. This is the iPhone 8. I actually don't have an iPhone SE2, but this and the iPhone SE2 are practically the same. So what's new with this phone is, well, not a whole lot, but things that matter. So one of the main differences between the iPhone 8 SE2 and the iPhone SE3 is the ceramic shield. This has what Apple calls its toughest glass yet, which means that you're a lot less likely to break it. Both of these phones still use an LCD, so no upgrade there. This phone uses the A15 Bionic, while this phone uses the A13 Bionic. And by this phone, I'm acting like this is an SE2. The SE3 though has a bigger battery than the SE2, it has 2018 milliamp hours, which was a very good year, by the way. And the SE2 has 1821. There's also new software for the camera and 5G connectivity. That's pretty much it for the major upgrades. Everything else is the same on the outside, but I'm more curious to see what's on the inside and what Apple did to make this phone unrepairable this year. Unscrew. Whoa, that was close. I put the camera too loose on my mount and it almost fell. Anyway, let's get this iPhone SE 3 opened. So, so far it opens exactly like the iPhone 8 and the iPhone SE 2. However, the screen seems a lot slimmer than the other phones. Open it up. So I haven't even opened up the phone yet, but Apple pulled what a, a Facebook marketplace technician would. There's missing screws. The iPhone 8 and SE2 have screws up here and the iPhone SE3 doesn't seem to have any screws. We're gonna turn off the phone, get our Wii Repair screen holder tool, which is linked in the description and open the phone up. Spider-Man was definitely here. So from first glance, the only thing that looks different is the battery. This one's kind of naked because I've uh, stripped it down. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said that. The battery looks different. So I'm not sure what else will be different. Just because the phone looks the same as the 8 and the SE2 does not mean it'll be the same in terms of repairability. We're gonna take off the screen and get a better look. Get our Phillips screwdriver and unscrew.
So over here, I have an opened up iPhone 8 and it's water damaged, not in the best condition, but I'm still using it for comparison. So as you can see, the battery is different, as I mentioned before. The screen is different. The reason those screws are missing is because the iPhone 8 has a full plate, while with the iPhone SE 3, they actually slimmed it down. They just put the plate here and the plate up here, skipping the entire back plate. So the overall layout is the same. This is responsible for the wireless charger and the uh, power button. This is the charging port, the battery, and this, I believe, is the speaker. It's the same exact layout here. Even the screen connectors look the same. I wanna see if the iPhone 8 screen will actually work on the iPhone SE 3. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna do that in my next short video, so be on the lookout for that one. So I'm gonna disconnect the battery on here and disconnect the screen, and then I'm gonna take off the motherboard and swap motherboards with this beautiful red one and see if we get any warnings like unable to activate Touch ID or unable to verify that this camera is genuine or the screen is genuine. Let's find out. This mat helps me immensely. I get to organize all the screws exactly like they were on the actual phone so that when I'm reinstalling everything, I know exactly where to put everything. Remove the logic board. So this is an iPhone 8 logic board and this is an iPhone SE 3 logic board. As you can see, they're very, very, very similar. All the connectors are in the same spots. The only thing that's really different from the get-go is just by looking at the bottom here, you can see they extended a little portion for an extra chip or 5G. Not really sure which one. Now we're gonna speed through the disassembly of the red iPhone and we're gonna swap the boards and see what's irreparable this time. So I'm also seeing a little bit of what I thought was rust, but it's actually not rust. It's probably just the welding that Apple does to merge the frame to the actual aluminum back panel. So we got both of these phones disassembled. The logic boards are free to go. We're going to swap them over and we're gonna see what messages pop up. So there we go, we have the black board on the red housing. Let's see what Apple did this time. Turn on the phone. And very typical, we have unable to activate Touch ID because the home button isn't native to this phone. Apple has crazy encryptions on these home buttons and they don't allow anybody to replace them or change them. And once they are changed, if you can change them, you'll lose Touch ID. So let's open up the phone. We'll head into settings. And we also have a battery notification. So now we can't read battery health or read battery data, typical of Apple. What we don't have, however, is a notification of a non-genuine screen or camera, which is what they do with the newer models. Let's see if everything still works. We're gonna turn on assistive touch so I can still maneuver. We'll go to the camera. The camera seems to still be working fine. Yeah, obviously we have no more battery health, which is to be expected. We'll check if True Tone is still there. And we lost True Tone as well, similar to the iPhone 8 and the iPhone SE 2. We're gonna test all other functions, make sure everything's working and come back. So with the iPhone 13, portrait mode and other camera modes weren't working properly. So I'm just testing to make sure that they're all working and testing to make sure that touch functionality works as usual and it seems like it does. So after testing almost every aspect of this phone, the only thing that really doesn't work is the battery health capacity and the actual home button. So this phone is not too different from the last phone. The, in terms of repairability, Apple hasn't changed anything. They've maintained the same state of repairability for this phone. This phone is basically an upgraded S2 with 5G, the A15 Bionic, and better durability. Aside from that, there's nothing that has been changed. We're definitely not going forward with better repairability, but at least we didn't go backwards. So 
I'll, I'll take that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're gonna be recording, editing, doing everything uh, for this video today. So if you did enjoy it, please leave a like, subscribe. We had to wait in the Apple store for quite a while. Their whole system went down. I think they knew uh, I was coming to, to test their new phone. But yeah, that is all guys. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. And this phone, honestly, not a bad phone if you're on a budget. Great for business, uh, good, good phone, good.